He represents the Society of Chiropodists, I said it right, he's been, he's been practicing with me, and podiatrists, and is the leader of one of Scotland's special health unions, representing professional podiatrists and chiropodists in the public and private sector, and they are in strike throughout Scotland today. Thank you here in Glasgow. I'm proud that this is the first time the Society of Progress and Varieties is taking strike action. So we are, we are a strike So you will probably ask yourself what motivated 85% turnout in our ballot to vote in favour of industrial action. I'll tell you what motivated it. It was an arrogant and competent government down south. Growth is going down, unemployment and borrowing is going up. Secondly, there is a sustained attack on the public sector. First of all, we had job losses. We've been suffering job losses for years, and yesterday in the autumn statement, they are now forecasting they want 710,000 job losses in the public sector by 2017. There might not be any of us around to collect a pension at this rate. Secondly, we've had a pay freeze for the last two years. Well, the last year we want one for next year. And then they're going to cap next year's pay freeze and year after that at 1%. What we want to do is talk today about pensions though. We want to get the message across, we want to get the message across to the public. And we want to fight, we want to fight the fiction with the facts. We must get the facts out there and convince the public. We also want to try and convince this government Preferably to go, but to at least listen to reason. <laughs> this government is out there to provide us. And on the 2nd of November, the day before Unison declared their results, the government announced in the House of Commons that they wouldn't review pensions for another 25 years. I think we consider ourselves lucky that Nick Clegg didn't sign a publicity placard on that one. But I suppose they're based on the fact that they'll probably never get back in power for another 25 years. So let's just move forward. I'm going to focus on the NHS pension because that's something I know a little about. Probably a very little, some people would say. But anyway. They all go on about that it's not sustainable. The NHS pension has a surplus UK wide of 2 billion. Now that should be enough for most people. Maybe not for the utility companies, but it should be enough to run a pension scheme. In Scotland there's a surplus of 220 million. So this is not about affordability or sustainability. This is clearly to pay off a debt that was created by bankers, not by us. on public service workers. It is not across the board. We are not all in this together. Yeah. A few years ago we had a review of pensions. Those of us in the public sector we had to face an increase of one and a half percent and then some of us are facing retirement at the age of 65. Now the government comes back and wants more. They want us to pay approximately 50% Pay more, work longer, get less, get stuff. Yeah. I just feel a little bit controversial now because I'm getting towards the end of my speech and nobody's throwing anything at me. <laughs> but we want to tackle the real issues. Let's not get sidetracked on gold-plated pensions. Because, actually, when the government and the Daily Mail print these headlines about gold-plated pensions, they're correct, aren't they? Because gold-plated, what it actually means is, it's a cheap substitute for the real thing. We don't want to have gold pensions. We want fair and adequate pensions. The reason we want this fair 
given that your attention is so that we can look after ourselves and not be a burden on the welfare state in our old age. <laughs> Colleagues, I applaud you and thank you for coming out on today and sacrificing the day's pay. And I think it's been a fantastic show of unity and solidarity in Glasgow. Thank you.